Nexus fits into Star Wars in a, in a funny way in the sense that if you look at the history of Western tropes in science fiction, the whole history of cowboys really starts in what we now call Texas. It's really a cowboy movie in space, so it totally relates to Texas. <laughs> Somebody who's like, oh, you're a Star Wars fan, well, you weren't around whenever it first came out. I'm like, well, tell me, what was your experience? Like, what was your moment? These characters transcended so many generations. The way films now try to jump on that same bandwagon that Star Wars did, I don't see them being as successful as Star Wars was. With Star Wars, there's just so much to do. It's such an open world, you know, very, no pun intended, sandboxy, you know. I was a kid, fell in love with R2-D2 and always wanted to have a robot of my own. Hello, R2, how are you? Oh, that's good to hear. I've become known as the Star Wars teacher. Class, class. Yeah, yeah. I'm one with the Force. The Force is with me! It's been exciting to hear Saber Guild, the Philo First, Rebel Legion, they're incredibly important. They're so diverse. I come from so many backgrounds. I have like a Death Trooper, I have my Mando, I have a Stormtrooper. For whatever reason, everyone's like, no, you gotta do your Slave Leia. I really try to mimic what Carrie Fisher did for all her photos in the Slave Leia. I try to do the late poses just to really sell the uh, character. He doesn't care, he just wants to have fun. This is my happy place to go and relax and enjoy a love of something that I've had since I was a kid. You know, I see the evil at work at home. When I come home, I want to have a, a relaxing atmosphere. Texas is super big. It's the place where you can live, live your fandom. I feel Texas Star Wars fans are more passionate. Like they always say, everything's bigger in Texas. We go overboard on a lot of stuff. Now you're about to enter a galaxy far, far. I keep all the expensive stuff. My collection is quarter of a million dollars or more. It's always portrayed as maybe guys being the fans, but there's actually a lot of female fans. It's a microcosm of what the world could be like if we stopped looking at everybody through their identities. Star Wars has changed my life forever. Hello? <laughs> Hello, Jack. How are you? I'm doing great. So, um, everybody, this is my friend Alejandro Cabrera. Please go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm Alejandro Cabrera, and uh, I don't know, this is weird. Uh, <laughs> I'm the, the director, producer, filmmaker um, behind uh, a documentary that Jack and I both worked on titled In the Lone Star Wars Dates. And I uh, see we're wearing the t-shirts. And this is the some of the posters. And um, yeah, it was an eight year journey. And uh, Jack, I don't know, what, what, do you, uh, what do you have to say? Well, first of all, I'm very happy to have my autograph poster. <laughs> Speaking for myself, I have now seen the film twice. I was there for the San Antonio world premiere and I was there for the Austin world premiere. Um, very different experiences for both of them. And I think we both agree that the Austin one was a lot better. Um, yes. but you and I are in the vast minority of people in that we have actually seen this film. So right. most people haven't In fact, I'm pretty, pretty much guarantee everyone who sees this video hasn't seen the film. So tell us about the film. What is this film in the Lone Star Wars state? So In the Lone Star Wars State is a documentary um, about the, the fandom here in Texas. Uh, and it's called In the Lone Star Wars State because uh, Texas is known as, you know, Florida is the, the, the sunshine state. I think it's the sunshine state. Um, and Texas is known as the Lone Star State. And, um, you know, uh, 
throughout my uh, my research, I found out that there were a lot of connections between science fiction and uh, and Texas, and particularly westerns. Um, you know, as we discuss in the movie, uh, Princess Leia is inspired by the women of the Mexican Revolution, and so much of uh, what Star Wars is, it's inspired by uh, the the cowboy uh, westerns and the spaghetti westerns. And um, in the movie, we talk about that. that. That's just one of the conversations that we have. Um, but really, the movie is an eight-year journey of uh, these last years of Star Wars fandom. And you see in real time um, people you know, shopping at Toys R Us outside of Toys R Us in, in September 2015, I think it's September 3rd, 2015, as they were waiting for the release of the Star Wars Force Awakens toys. And then you see that throughout the years. Um, and we discuss fandom, uh, but most importantly, we talk about why fandom is important. And we meet different peoples through, you know, different who are part of different generations, different age groups, and we see how they use Star Wars as a way to um, either uh, change their lives or as a way to, you know, we meet Heather Trupe, who's a teacher uh, who works at a Title I school, which is a low socioeconomic um, env school environment. And she uses Star Wars as a way to uh, inspire her students and promote literacy. And um, we meet um, members of the 501st Legion, such as yourself. Um, and we see how, you know, being part of the fandom has helped them. We meet collectors. And uh, one of the collectors that we meet, um, his name is uh, Chris Kelly. And his collection is so big that um, they had to move from a two-story home in Texas. And Jack, you know, like here in Texas, homes are pretty big. Yes. But he had into like a bigger property because his whole house had become a Star Wars uh, museum. I, I, I uh, lovingly call him a Star Wars hoarder. And uh, he has this big property outside of Austin. And even with that, he doesn't have enough room. Um, so we we see things like that. Um, you know, in, in the movie we say, um, everything's bigger in Texas and Star Wars is no exception. So no better fandom than the one that you will find here in Texas. Um, and I think the the most special thing about it was um, specifically in these divisive times uh, that we're living in, um, just seeing people from different walks of lives and, and different ideals and belief systems and even generations, um, how this one thing, right, that's ultimately considered uh, you know, a big part of so many of our childhoods, um, how this one thing has been able to unite people and build friendships. I mean, we are uh, a, a great example of that. We, we met in uh, September 2019. Uh, little did we know we had actually been in several places before that at the same time. We just hadn't officially met. And yet we have this wonderful friendship and, and relationship and um, it, it's really what the movie is about. Um, I, I think um, fandom is, uh, is sort of in an interesting place right now um, because yeah, it's, everybody has certain opinions about, you know, certain things that they've done um, without going there. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, I think it's a reminder of how much, how similar we are rather than how different we are and, and what happens when we, choose to focus on something that um that uh that makes us alike yeah and it's just bump my mic so it's uh important for people to know that this isn't just like a uh a web series this isn't like you just taking your phone uh to all these conventions or whatever and and sharing your footage like this is a proper bona fide documentary like this is um unequivocally a motion picture Yes. And I was very, very, um, you know, I, I'm, it, it took eight years. Um, I don't have a crew, as you know, I don't have, um, you know, I'm, I film everything myself and certain things towards the end, uh, certain things that were a little bit more complex. I was able to, uh, 
get the help of my my dear friend and cinematographer Greg Risley. Um, but everything I, I have to do myself, edit myself. But even at that, um, I I'm all about quality over quantity, and I wanted to make sure that um, the story was uh, not just a, a wonderful story, but something that was visually uh, epic. And uh, and I wanted to take the viewers and the audience on an adventure, um, visual adventure. Um, you know, oftentimes documentaries can be sort of like, uh, you know, there's a lot of, as they say, talking heads. Um, and I wanted it to be more than that. I wanted it to be informational, but I also wanted it to be visual. Um, I wanted to take the, the, the viewers through this beautiful journey. As you can see through some of the posters, uh, this is just a small example of how epic uh, things get. Um, you know, uh, we have um, before each segment in the documentary, uh, we recreate uh, an iconic scene from Star Wars and we built a, a big cantina set um, inspired by uh, A New Hope. Uh, we built a, uh, a uh, trash compactor with a... Uh, Dionaga, um, you know, we have a, a Death Star uh, set. Um, so we really went all out. Um, and uh, again, I think the way people have responded to it, um, it's been very, very uh, humbling and, and uh, inspiring as well. Yeah. Um, just to give people uh, a small look behind the scenes. So over the last several years, while you've been making this, you've been sharing uh, a few clips with me as you've been editing it. And uh, just speaking for myself, it's been amazing watching this film come together. As someone who didn't even come into it until relatively close to the end of production, it was actually really fun to uh, to look behind the curtain and see just the sheer amount of work that you've put into to make this happen. And also through happenstance or through some other greater purpose, you've actually managed to talk with people and capture events that uh, have turned out to be pretty historically important. Like what comes to mind, obviously for me is the force for Daniel campaign, but you've also had interviews with people who ended up working with Lucasfilm later. And you've had people who were really uh, involved in the costuming groups and, and stuff like that. And I, I got to ask, how much of that was planned? Like uh, planned in, in 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 what sense? Like how much? Let me let me rephrase the question then. Yeah. Um, what was your goal when you first started making the film, as opposed to what it ended up becoming eight years later? So originally, um, I started filming in summer two thousand fifteen. Um, at that time, as you remember, The Force Awakens, there was all this hype that was being built around the release of The Force Awakens. Mm. And um, I recognized that this there hadn't been a Star Wars movie uh, in 10 years since uh, Revenge of the Sith back in May 19th, 2005. Um, and of course, you know, there was the Clone Wars on Cartoon Network and there was a movie version in 2008. But in terms of like a live action feature film, part of the original trilogy in the cinema. The last one was uh, uh, Revenge of the Sith. So that year, there was just this amazing effusive excitement around The Force Awakens. There was not a lot that we knew about the movie. Um, up until that point, we had only gotten that one teaser trailer from Thanksgiving 2014. And then that uh, wonderful first trailer uh, where we see Harrison Ford and uh, and uh, Chewbacca, and they say, Chewie, we're home. Um, but we didn't know much about what the movie was going to be about, and there was just this excitement. And I recognized uh, that this was very unique and very historical. Not many films, uh, even 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 today's in today's world, uh, I mean, you could say Barbie last year, but that was Bar Barbenheimer. But that was sort of like one of those like uh, um, bottle uh, catching lightning in a bottle moments. Um, but other than that, there there aren't really movies that get that sort of effusive excitement. I mean, Marvel comes close, but not. You know, we've we've talked about this, not at the same level. 
And um, I recognized it was very historical. It was it was very unique. And I said, you know what? I really want to capture this moment. Originally, it was only going to center around the release of um, the, the Force Awakens. We were not going to cover, you know, anything that happened after that. Um, but uh, long story short, uh, the story just evolved from there, and it just grew. And and I I recognize that um, just the idea of capturing fandom in real time. I don't think that that's ever been done. You know, we've seen documentaries and films where people talk about their experience in fandom, but to capture it in real time, um, to see it develop in real time. I mean, you get to go to Toys R Us at midnight and you get to see everything that's happening in the anticipation and you get to see, you know, <laughs> certain hilarious moments that happen. Um, and, uh, you get to see also um, where it started and where Disney obviously is sort of trying to figure out um, uh, what is the state of Star Wars fandom. And you see it through certain decisions that they've made in real time. Um, and again, it was just my idea of like, wow, like I, I, it comes back from the notion of, I, to me, the, the closest thing that we have to time travel is film um, because a picture is a thousand words, but a picture is based on your own uh, interpretation, <clears throat> and it's just a frame, right? And um, film is is an actual, you know, uh, moment, and you get to relive it in real time, and 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 you get it's the closest thing that we have again to time travel. And I wanted to capture this moment. I knew that there was something very special about it. And uh, we get to see it from 2015 to, uh, to 2023. Um, and uh, I, I still, I can't believe we pulled it off. Um, it, there was a lot of work that went into it because again, I film everything myself, every drone shot, every everything, everything myself. And um and I had to edit it myself as well. Uh, and as you remember, um, at the San Antonio premiere on uh, November 11th, 2023, uh, we screened a four hour version. Um, technically, we the movie is almost six hours. Uh, so there's so much material there. Uh, but yeah, it was, I, I'm just amazed at, uh, at everything that has come out of it. Yeah. Um... To the point where I remember you posted a uh, Instagram reel where you were showing like you you got so much extra footage about the journey of making this documentary. Yeah. You were thinking of making a documentary about making the documentary. Correct. Right. I don't know if that's still in your plans or not. I hope it is, but I understand if you want to sit back and take a break for a few decades. Well, we have a few things planned uh, right now. Uh, I mean, the movie has been uh, so well received uh, locally in the state. And, you know, to me, film is is something, films are an experience, right? Um, and, and they're almost something, uh, I say it's almost like going to the movies is almost like going to church because you, you go and you leave your personal things behind and you get to sit in that, you know, theater and it's an intimate experience and you leave transformed. And I, I didn't want to originally, you know, you and I have talked a lot about this. Originally, I wanted to um, release this online. And after careful consideration, I said, you know, this is a journey and this is this is an experience. And I wanted people to experience it uh, in a way that was intimate, in a way that was pure. And so it's it's why we've done uh, a lot of. I mean, we've we screened it in San Antonio. We've screened it in Houston two times. Uh, we had the opportunity of screening it at uh, at Comic Palooza. Uh, we were invited to uh, screen it at uh, the uh, uh, Texas uh, State uh, Museum, uh, the Bob Bullock Museum, which is the official State of Texas Museum, and and that was such a huge honor. I mean. That museum has had presidents, uh, the president, you know, United States presidents have gone through there. Uh, well-known filmmakers have gone through there. I mean, Robert Rodriguez, who directed, uh, who's a major director here uh, in all over the world, but he directed a few of the Mandalorian episodes. 
Um, you know, he's been there and to have the honor to be able to show the film there was was a prestigious honor. And, and, and you know, I, I was amazed at how many people were there that day. Um, all the press that it's generated uh, locally in San Antonio, Austin, Houston and other places. Um, but I'm very excited uh, to finally release this now on um, on DVD. Uh, the DVD, the the reception of the DVD and the response has just been overwhelming. Uh, people have like literally like been buying them left and right, and um, you know just so much thought went into uh, again. Films are uh, they are a journey, they are an experience, and even with the DVD. Um, I, I put a lot of thought into it and in terms of like the cover, the, you know, what was on the insert, the, the disc label, uh, the menu, um, and a lot of it is inspired by what, uh, what I loved about physical media when I was a kid, you know, you and I are nineties kids. Um, you know, I remember, you know, going to the video store and I don't know if you remember, but you know. Nickelodeon VHS tapes, mm. those were always fun because the, the the tape was orange and the, the case was orange. Um, and so we, we with that understanding, there was a lot of thought behind um, the, the DVD um, uh, cover. So I'm excited for people to finally be able to see it uh, and experience it at home. And and um, I, I, again, like I think when, when people get something physical, as opposed to something that they're streaming, they're making a commitment um, to, to hey, you know what, we're making a commitment to sit down and watch this. And, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a film that's very, very inspiring. And, and, but it's fun. You laugh, you cry, you, you leave, you know, with a different uh, positive outlook. And um, I think now more than ever, we, we need stories. Um, we need stories like that in the world. And, and um, I don't know, it does, I don't know. What did, what did you think about the film? What did you find that was uh, inspiring? What, what did you connect with? Oh, uh, for me, ah, uh... oh, man. <laughs> I, for me, I, I, I'm probably the wrong person to ask just because I've seen it in so many different uh, you know, so many different ways. I've, I've, I mean, you've shown me clips that have yet to be seen by anyone else, uh, even outside of that four hour cut. I, you're the only person that has seen. There was, there was that out there. I sent you about an hour that has yet to be seen. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, um, you know, what does the film make me feel? It makes me feel like I want to see more. <laughs> like yeah. even, even like I, I've seen at this point, probably five hours of the film. Yeah. And, uh, I still feel like there's so much that could be shared. Um, they, you know, what you said is exactly right. Like it'll make you laugh. It'll make you cry. Um, I, I could definitely agree with that. I think that, I think that after the Austin premiere, which I went to with my sister. Um, she had known about the film ever since I was interviewed for it, and uh, that was her first time seeing anything of it. So she went in with a, a blank slate, no expectations. And for her, at the very end, she cried during the Force for Daniel thing because, like, she knew it was going to happen. I had been on top of that. I'd been telling my family about that as it was happening back in 2015. And she she knew it was going to be in the film. And yet, even after that, it was still so it was still such an emotional impact for her because seeing the film, seeing any film, seeing the people behind the text of, of like, this is the name of this person. This is what happened to them. Seeing the actual story and the actual journey with your own two eyes is something that just cannot be replicated any other way. And I think the biggest impact for me was when she came out of the movie and said, that it made her cry, but it was in the best way possible. Yeah, I, you know, and, and that's something that um, it's, it, you know, of course, you don't want people crying. You don't want to make people cry, but it, it's it's I see it as a as a compliment um, that that seems to be the sentiment um, all across, um, you know, force for Daniel, uh, which, you know, we've we've both been uh, involved in 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 different ways. Um, that was, uh, as you remember, that was a, a very big thing. Uh, it was in November, 2015. 
And, you know, uh, Daniel Fleetwood, um, who, uh, who has since passed away, uh, was a fan who, um, who was terminally ill. And um, his final wish was to see The Force Awakens, which was uh, just a month away from being released. And uh, his, his wife at the time, Ashley, Ashley Fleetwood, now Ashley Stanley, um, you know, her and, and the family, you know, they sent out this tweet and, um, and it went viral. And it caught the attention of uh, the late Peter Mayhew, who played Chewbacca. It caught the attention of Mark Hamill, John Boyega. And it was because of the Star Wars fans, not just here, but all over the world, that um, our voices were loud enough that we were able to get the attention of, of Disney. Uh, but Disney wasn't responding for a while. And it's something that we see in the movie, like Disney sort of like, you know, at first, like they hadn't responded. And, and finally our voices were loud enough, um, that they responded. They showed up to their house in Springs, uh, Texas, which is just outside of Houston. And they showed him a four hour, uh, cut of the force awakens, uh, just a month before the movie came out. And, you know, that was that was such an inspiring time um, because we get to see uh, as humanity what we are capable of doing when we come together for the greater good, when we use our platforms online um, to inspire and to empower. And, um, you know, it, I, 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 I was heavily inspired by that. Um, I, as you see in the movie, uh, in real time, I, went to Ashley's house in, in, in Springs at the time. And I interviewed her uh, two days before Lucasfilm shows up to her house to show her the movie. Uh, and a day before J.J. Abrams calls her, the director of The Force Awakens, personally on the phone to tell her that they're going to see the movie. At the time, we didn't know what was going to happen. Um, and, you know, I think the most powerful moment was um, being here in San Antonio, Texas, uh, and a large group of fans gathered outside of, uh, in front of the Alamo, and they all raised their lightsabers up uh, to honor Daniel Fleetwood. Um, and just seeing, you know, this is a person that they've never met, uh, they will never meet, but yet um, the fact that they felt so inspired and connected uh, and, and to him, you know, and, and, and everybody had a moment of silent racing the lightsaber. Um, that was very powerful. But in the movie, we, we also get to see, uh, we get to see Force for Daniel and we get to see what happens. But we also get to, to see Ashley's journey, you know, his, his wife, Ashley, and, and what happens when something like this uh, happens in, uh, in, in such a public way, because she immediately was thrown into the spotlight because of Star Wars, because you had actors like Mark Hamill and Peter Mayhew and everybody talking about it. I mean, TMZ, uh, NBC News, Fox News, um, Entertainment Tonight, uh, People Magazine, Times Magazine, everybody was covering Force for Daniel. And so she, for a while, was, um, you know, it went viral um, for a while, like, you know, People were following her every move. And how do you mourn? You know, her, her husband passed away. I think it was a few days after he saw The Force Awakens. And they've been together for four years. They've known each other since they were in college. And how do you mourn when now you're in public and you're consistently being reminded of, um, you know, your husband and not just reminded of, of, peop uh, of your husband through people, but you're reminded of him, you know, through everyday life because, you know, Star Wars is everywhere. You go to the grocery store, you know, you turn on the television, you're on social media, you're walking down the street and somebody's wearing a t-shirt, you know, um, how do you mourn and, and how do you evolve from that? And um, we see her through this eight year journey as well. And we see her evolve from that very challenging time in her life. And, um, you know, we see what happens to her um, and, and, uh, you know, she, she, she's a, she's a big inspiration to me. Uh, I consider her a very dear friend of mine. We, we became friends throughout this experience. 
Uh, I got to witness in real time um, all of her wonderful things. Um, you know, I think it's safe to say, I mean, you and I were both there. Um, Ashley, uh, Ashley Stanley um, did get married again. And she found love uh, with an amazing, an amazing, wonderful man by the name of Tony. And uh, together they have two wonderful children. And it's it's been amazing seeing how um, how she's been able to uh, not move on because again, um, Daniel will always be a part of her life. Uh, it is because of Daniel that now she has this other wonderful uh, life. Um, but to see how she was able to um, find peace in her life. And um, it, it, it's inspiring to see how uh, beauty uh, was born out of such darkness and, and such challenging moments. Um, and I think that's something that we can all relate to. You know, these last few years, you know, we, we had this horrible pandemic. We've had other things. We've all dealt with some sort of loss. Um, and to see her journey and to see her story and to see her evolve, I, I thought that that was a big um, masterclass moment. And she definitely has taught me a lot. Um, and um, we get to see that. And so I'm excited for people to, to see that part. Yeah. I mean, I've told you throughout the years, if you have to cut everything else from the film, make sure you keep this because I feel like it was the most important. And I still feel that way. That being said, I'm happy to see all the rest of the film because you've you've really done a good job of capturing all the different aspects of the fandom in Texas. Everything from toy collectors who, who have like warehouses full of different toys and, and collectibles to the costuming groups to uh, to all that other stuff. You, you've done an amazing job of just showing that like there, there's just a whole lot of Star Wars in Texas. Yeah, no, it, it, it's it was just I was surprised when I when I had the idea, I was like, where am I going to find, um, you know, people that are passionate about Star Wars in Texas? And, um, you know, as we've talked, you know, like you, you got I got to the point where I was like, I had to turn away things or like, you know, really be very selective with what I was going to put, because there's so much here, uh, you know, again, there, no fandom, no state is better than the the, the other. Um, I think fandom overall is something that's special, and we all have our own way of of um, celebrating fandom, right? Um, but I'd say here in Texas, uh, it's the the Star Wars fandom is huge. If you're if you're a massive Star Wars fan and you want to live closer to a bigger fandom community, this is the place to uh, to be. And and also, uh, again, I I thought it was cool. Um, <clears throat> my research finding out a lot of the connections that um texas and star wars have to one another because of westerns um and so i again i just thought that that added um even more value to uh to our film about how many hours of footage do you think you've filmed oh gosh um last time i checked was about uh about eight thousand five hundred hours eighty five hundred yeah. hours of footage yeah. shot you got to remember that we started filming um, like nine years ago, September 3rd, 2015. And our last day of filming was two weeks before the premiere in San Antonio. Uh, and that was October 24th or 23rd, 2023. So there's a lot. I mean, there's there's things in there. There's interviews that haven't didn't even get to see the day of light. Um, I think you are probably one of the few people that has seen the most of everything. Um, because again, it, it's it's a lot. Um, even when we did the screening in, in San Antonio, um, you know, people still wanted to know, like, is there more? Like, you know, what's gonna happen? Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot of, um, a lot of editing, yeah. <laughs> a lot of nights. So for this DVD release, let's let's focus on that now for, for the moment. Um, yeah. You've condensed that 8,000 down to just about two hours flat, just around there. Um, tell us about the DVD. Um, so right now, that's pretty much the only way to watch the film, right? Correct. You know, I, I, we, we wanted to do, I wanted to do a DVD um, because, again, like, I'm a big proponent of physical media. Um, and, you know, it's 
it's part of the experience again everything from the packaging to the the branding and and everything um and so that was one of the things that i wanted to do and um the dvd is is it's a, it's a two-hour version of the film um but it's pretty it's i mean it's a good i'd say it's a good um it's a good it's a it's it's a good visual feast so you still get uh all the nutrients and and everything that's important um we couldn't fit obviously six hours into a, a dvd disc um and right now um you know we wanted to start off in that direction so the dvd is the theatrical cut of the film um but it has um it has uh, an extra 35 minutes that were not shown in theaters or in any of the screenings. So that was my my gift and my treat to to all the fans out there that that wanted to see a little bit more. Um, and uh, again, we wanted to start first with a DVD and just see how things uh, play out. I mean, so far it's just been uh, blowing through the roof. It's been uh, it's been as as they say in Star Wars, um, uh, hi hyperspeed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, hmm. uh, so I'm excited. Um, we are currently talking about possibly making um, an extended director's cut, which would have um, about six six to five hours. And that would mean um, you would see, you know, everything else that you didn't get to see. Um, and then there would be an extensive amount of uh, behind the scenes and uh, documentaries and other things that, you know, show the audience the journey. Um, but we'll see, we'll see, um, we'll see what happens right now. It's not official yet. Uh, so yeah, right now all we have is a DVD and we'll see, we'll see um, how, uh, how everything plays out. Yeah, you guys want the extended edition? Go get the standard one, come on, support this thing. <laughs> yes, yes, it, it, you know, um, and, and again, um, the DVD, and the 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 potential Blu-ray uh, director's cut, they will be completely different versions of the film. So just because you got the DVD doesn't mean that you haven't doesn't mean um, that the Blu-ray is going to be the same. They'll be completely different things. They'll offer different things. Um, I hate it when when film studios do that when they release something on on DVD and then they release the same thing on Blu-ray and then you're upset because you're like oh I could have waited to buy the Blu-ray and um and you st I still buy them um right. but uh, and I know you do too cuz you're uh, you're 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 like me like that um but I wanted to give the audience again it's two different films two different experiences there's some similarities but again because of the amount of content um they're they're very one thing will give you one thing and the other will give you another and uh again the blu-ray is is something that we're we're there's conversation a bit um we're working on it um but right now um the best way to see it is on dvd uh we only made uh a limited amount of copies um this will not be online uh again as part of my commitment to uh to uh keeping this whole thing pure and uh committing to the fact that this is an experience. We will not be releasing this on YouTube. Uh, I'm an independent filmmaker, so I've done all the self-distribution myself. So this will not be on streaming at all, on Netflix or Disney Plus or anywhere. Um, and so again, um, you're supporting an independent filmmaker as well. Uh, but it's a fun film. Um, I think people will love it. Um, I've, I've known of people, it's, it's funny, in the screenings, um, sometimes you'll run into the same people. Like, you know, I've, I've had two or three people that like, you know, the screenings that we've had throughout the state. And you know, Austin is is about three hours from Houston. San Antonio is about three hours from Houston. You know, um, and it's funny, like I'll, I'll, we've done these screenings in different city, cities and there's usually one or two people that always show up to the same screening and it's like oh what are you doing here it's like oh we loved it we want to see it again um oh that's so that, got to be such a great feeling yeah it's, it's it's very flattering and a lot of times you know it's it's people that you you know you met because they they came to the first screening and the fact that they keep coming you know it's um it's a it's a big um it's a big compliment so uh i i'm i'm very flattered and i think again 
people are going to um, people are going to love this. So uh, so so get your copy. All right. Um, so I believe that we have a clip that we're going to show of the film right now, exclusively for this interview. So let's go ahead and roll it. Yes. So you've seen the galaxy far, far away. Of course. Okay. Now you're about to enter a galaxy far, far away. I have a bad feeling about this, but let's do this. <laughs> Well, this is it. It's been a long time in the making. This is amazing. <laughs> it's been four years, four years in the making, and it's finally complete. Once I started it, I couldn't stop. <laughs> uh, I think everybody is immediately gravitates towards the, the lights that kind of line the room. That, that's a real focal point of the place. Infinity mirror behind me. The infinity mirror has people puzzled for at least 10 minutes when they come in. They're looking at it and trying to figure out what's going on with it. and you know, how, why it looks like that. And of course the hologram table, that's, that's a pretty neat little, little thing to show people. So I've got a couple of pieces to show you in okay. here. Uh, first one I'm gonna start out with is right over my right shoulder here. Uh, this is actually me frozen in carbonite, not Han Solo. We made it out of plaster and fiberglass. A lot of mistakes that were made along the way whenever I was making it, but we held on to it and we made it and we finally got it finished. Panels you see around this thing, these are actually original casts of what they used in the movie. I added the shirt about a year ago because I, I couldn't figure out how to get the plaster to lay right whenever I had it. And so we ended up just saying, hell with it. We're doing it bare chested <laughs> until we can figure it out. So that's Lance Solo. That's Lance Solo. Uh, but anyway, he did actually score me 10 free tickets for me and my friends to go see The Phantom Menace 20 years ago when I built it. Over here we got Yoda. <laughs> that's uh, that's my, son, uh, my son's friend. He, that's, that's actually his and he kind of has put it over here and hasn't taken it out yet. <laughs> so that is, uh, that is Lance Hathaway. Um, he lives in a small town, very, very small town. Uh, I oftentimes joke with him and say that it's so small, they didn't even have a Walmart in that town. Um, and it's Orange, Texas. It's about, I think it's almost at the border between Texas and Louisiana. And it's, I think it's it two hours or, or, or two hours or you've been, you've been to uh, Bridge City. Is it two hours or about an hour away from Houston? Um, depends on or, where in Houston, obviously, but yeah, about an hour, an hour and a half, about, somewhere like that. Yeah. Um, and I remember I drove six hours from San Antonio uh, we only had two days to film there, and uh, Lance Hathaway built this amazing Star Wars-themed home theater, and it's inspired by the Death Star. And just being inside of that theater, I mean, I think you you just saw it right now, uh, and and it's it's funny sitting in the movie theater with people as that moment comes on. And, I, and people always like gasp. And I always turn and say to the person next to me, like, you know, you have no idea. Like in person, it's a whole nother thing. Yeah. Um, and that theater, again, that's the that's the thing of like every young Star Wars fans uh, childhood dream. And um, his story is pretty cool. Um, his home theater, actually, he, he built it in 2017. And because of the hurricane and uh, Harvey, and the flood, um, his whole house flooded and his home, th they lost their home and everything. And they had to rebuild everything from scratch. And what's so inspiring about Lance is that he actually went back and rebuilt his Star Wars themed uh, home theater. Um, but again, that's just a little taste of how big Star Wars is here in Texas. All right. Um, well, we're coming towards the end of our time. So I guess my biggest question that I have for you is what's next? So many things right now. Um, obviously, uh, we're, we're still sort of, uh, working on the film and seeing, um, you know, what we, what direction we want to go with. Again, there's talk of, uh, of a potential Blu-ray director's cut. Uh, I would buy that. Yeah, well, I know you did. <laughs> um, there, there's talk of a potential, um, Blu-rays cut. Uh, and, um, and then, you know, I'm in, in terms of me and what's next for me, uh, regarding, you know, my filmmaking journey, 
Uh, I'm in the very early stages of, uh, of, of my next film. It won't be Star Wars related. Um, it won't be uh, a documentary, uh, but um, it'll be, you know, it'll still have the same values and, um, and passion that I give everything I do. And uh, it's sort of, uh, it's, it's, I think the best way to describe it, it's a coming of age slash uh, comedy slash drama. So that's what's next. But, um, you know, I, I had so much fun making this documentary. It's it's eight years of my life. I mean, high school is four years. Medical school is usually about eight years. So I, I feel like um, it, it's it's been a big investment, uh, not just financially, but, but personally as well. And I had so much fun. Um, you know, I, I, I love to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with, with the idea of like, you know, uh, it's almost like giving birth, like, you know, it's now a child is 18, you know, now it gets to go to college and, you know, have its own life. Um, so I'm having a little bit of, uh, what is that thing that they call, uh, empty nester syndrome, you know, uh, films, I always say as a filmmaker, your films are almost like your children. And once they're completed, um, you know, it's almost like they're, uh, they graduate. And so, yeah. Um, but I had so much fun. Um, and, uh, if there's ever an opportunity to continue it, uh, I'd love to. Um, so we'll see. All right. Well, um, I believe that I have asked all the questions I wanted to ask. Is there anything well, that you wanted to add? Well, we forgot the best part. Oh, did we? You're, you're, you are throughout the movie. <laughs> You are throughout the movie. You know, you know, you're throughout the movie and and you open the movie. You give a very we're not going to give it away, but you make a very powerful uh, opening statement, which is so true. Uh, it's still when I, it's funny watching people in the movie theaters or, you know, whenever they're watching the movie. And, and I always like to look at them when you make that statement, because it's like they get goosebumps. Like, oh, it's so true. You know, Star Wars is such a big event. Um, and we can, we can say it. You remember what you said? In life, there's a first time for everything. There's the birth of your first child. I can't remember the next one. The birth of your first child. <laughs> there is your wedding day. Your wedding day. And then there's the first time you see Star Wars. Yeah. And whenever you say that, boom, it's, 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 it's interesting. Uh, the reaction that people people get because it's like it's true i mean star wars was not just any movie it's the movie that changed cinema forever it's the movie that changed how we self how we market films how we tell stories um i think i had somebody recently say to me that george lucas was the thomas edison of filmmaking and i i believe that very thoroughly um he made filmmaking uh democratic. He made filmmaking affordable. Uh, before, filmmaking was something that was stuffy, that was, uh, you know, very elitist. And, and um, you know, he he was a rebel in his own right. And um, yeah, again, uh, I'm, um, again, Star Wars is just, uh, it's, 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 it's just, it's bigger than, than it's, it's bigger than a film. I agree. <laughs> As uh, someone who was there throughout this entire process, um, half of it with you and half of it just sort of um, experiencing it on my own. Yeah, um, we lived in a, a point in time that we're probably never going to see the likes of again yeah. with, with the release of the sequels. Like, I cannot emphasize to anyone who wasn't there enough just how big of a deal it was when The Force Awakens was releasing. Like... I can't think of any other film in in my lifetime that had that much hype and that much excitement around it. And, and that high, we rode that high for years afterwards and you managed to capture it as it was happening. And I, I think that's awesome. I thank you. Thank you. I, I think that was one of the things that it's, it's funny, like, you know, it's no secret we're living in a time right now where where fandom is so gosh it's it's sort of in such a divisive place and and um it, it's so unfortunate you know 
do I like everything that they've done? Do I like every Star Wars movie? No, but I enjoy, you know, I, I, I'll see it. I watch everything. I enjoy everything. Um, there's certain films that I prefer more than the other. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate to see the state of fandom and to see how divisive it is and how people um, have turned on each other. And I oftentimes, um, the other day, actually, I was looking at some of the footage that we filmed um, in the during uh, at opening night when The Force Awakens came out. We didn't just film at the movie theaters, by the way, for The Force Awakens. I filmed the day the movie came out on DVD and Blu-ray in April 2016. And it, it was at a grocery store here in San Antonio. And there was a line of people around the DVD and the Blu-rays. And I mean, even at that, like, I mean, people don't buy, uh, you know, nowadays a lot of people stream and everything. But even buying the DVD and the Blu-ray was an event. You know, it was an event. It was a big deal. And, um, you know, I remember, like, again, I, I think it goes back to it's more than just the films. It's about what was happening around the films. Even as child, when I think of Star Wars, I think of my childhood. I think about, you know, what was happening around the time I was introduced to the films. And that's powerful. You know, how many films can you remember where you were when you saw it and everything that was happening in your life? And I'm, I mean, The Force Awakens, the release of that film, I think the closest thing that I've experienced to that effusive excitement uh, was Barbie, was Barbie 2023, because that movie for almost an entire month, uh, and I saw it with a few girlfriends a few times, every time I went to the movie theaters, people were dressed up, people were excited. And uh, The Force Awakens, again, it was, I, I almost loved being in the lobby. Then be, I mean, I, and I loved the movie, the movie was great. But I loved almost like being in the lobby, lobby, and just seeing it. It was, it was magic. It was magic in the costumes, and um, you know, it, it's a time that that again, uh, we'll, we'll have we'll have similar things, but I don't think we'll get anything like that. I hope that you know, with the 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 now new film, uh, what is it, Mandalorian and Grogu? I hope that we get something like that. Um, but again, that's what films are. Films are an experience. It's not about buying a ticket and sitting somewhere. It's about going to the movies and, you know, even the smell of popcorn. And, and um, there's something exciting about it. You know, even, you know, poster, the, you know, the movie posters. And it's all part of that experience. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Is there anything else you want to add concerning your film? Uh they say everything's bigger in Texas, and Star Wars is no exception. Hmm. Which reminds me, you should include the trailer as a extra on the uh, DVD. <laughs> but it's it's too late though. Uh, <laughs> the Blu-ray, the collector's edition Blu-ray with all the extra goodies and stuff. If we do, if we do do the Blu-ray, um, I, I that will be one of the things because that was a big thing with 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 movies back then. But yes, I'll definitely include it in there. All right, well. Alejandro, thank you for joining me today. Um, congratulations on your film. It's awesome. By the way, the t-shirt looks great on you. Ah, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I love it. I like yours as well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, everyone, if you want a copy of the film, head on over to Alejandro's Etsy shop and place your order. Link is in the description, of course. Um, and follow us on Instagram at In the Lone Star Wars State. Absolutely do that as well. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Thank everyone, you. for watching, and stay tuned for more.